Dark Table 3.6 has either just been released or is just about to be released, depending on when you're watching this video. In the last episode, we looked at all the changes to the preferences and the light table view. And in this episode, we're going to look at all the stuff that is either changed or new in the dark room view. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 96 of Understanding Dark Table. Wow, the devs have been super busy. And it is now official. There will be two stable releases every year from now on. So mid-year and Christmas Day as per the old regime. That's pretty exciting in its own right. All right, so the first thing to note is the... Uh, retirement, if you like, of the basic adjustments panel. Now, if memory serves me correctly, the basic adjustments panel was only introduced in Darktable 3.2, or maybe 3.0, but I, I think it only lasted one or two versions. It has been replaced by a new module. Well, it's not really a mod. Uh, it's not really a module. It's basically a cut down of a whole bunch of modules. If you look at your module groups just across the bottom of the histogram there, the very first uh, group, if you like, on the left is the quick access panel. And so this replaces the basic adjustments module. You will notice that there are different module power buttons within this quick access panel. Local contrast, color balance RGB, color calibration, exposure, crop and rotate, lens correction, and denoise profile. What this panel is, is a set of shortcuts, if you like, to all of those respective modules. And you will notice that on each of them in, on the right hand side, there is a little square with an arrow. And basically that's saying, go to the full version of this particular module. But the beauty of this panel is you can do 90% of what you need to do for most of your images straight from here without having to do anything else. That's pretty cool. I do like it. The color balance RGB is a new module. I'll talk about that later in this video. But for now, the quick access panel is this group of shortcuts to the most common tools that you'll need. I think I'm going to get a lot of use out of this. Next up, I love this edition, although I have to confess that it is a little weird that it's on the left hand side. But inside the darkroom, we now have an export module. Yay! And it is an exact replica of the export module which appears in the light table view. But we're in the light table view, it's on the right hand side. Here in the darkroom view, it's on the left hand side. I kind of get it because all the other utility type modules in Darkroom are on the left hand side where the right hand side is reserved for all of those modules which actually allow you to modify the pixels in your image. So I, I kind of get the thinking behind its placement being on the left. I just think it's unfortunate that it's on the right hand side in light table and on the left hand side in the Darkroom. I'll get used to it, and I'm sure you will too. I love the idea that it's there though, that you know I can now work on a single image if I you know just need to get one image processed and out the door via email or something like that, and I can do the export directly from in the darkroom without having to jump out to the light table view to do it. Love that. Next up, there's been some changes to the way we use and manage the module groups. Now, you will remember that the hamburger icon on the right hand side has an option at the bottom of it that says manage presets. And this will allow us to access the manage module layouts window. And from here we can create our own presets of module groups, etc., etc. You knew all about that. However, there is now a faster way to access that window. And that is simply to hold down your control key and left click on the hamburger. And that will launch that window straight away without having to invoke the menu and then select manage presets. So just a little bit of a time saver. 
You will also find that off these module group headers, you can right click and find a new pop-up menu. And it's divided into two halves. The top section is remove module. So it will show you the modules which currently exist in that particular group. In this case, I've right clicked on the base group. And you can simply left click on any one of these entries to remove that module from the group that you are currently editing. And then the bottom half is add module. And what it will do is show you a bunch of modules that are most commonly added to this particular group, in this case, the base group. But it also shows you the all available modules option at the bottom of the list from where you can find every single module in Darktable and add any one of them to the current group that you're editing. So you'll notice that if I go to the color group, the modules which are included are obviously a different set of modules and the ones that are pre-selected as ones that you might want to add are all color related modules. But if there is something that's not a color related module that you for some reason want to add to the color group, go to the all available modules and select it and off you go. Beautiful. One thing to note though, if you right click on any of these module headers and you use the new pop-up menu to modify those uh, groups of modules, it will not update any preset that you've created through the manage module layouts window. Okay, so if, for example, I was to choose from this menu my Bruce 01 preset of module groups and I was to try and modify the color group, you'll notice that when I right click, there is no add module option. It's only the option to remove existing modules from that group. So it won't update the preset. That may come in a later update, I don't know. Also, with regards to the Manage Module Layouts window, there is also an option to edit the Quick Access Panel. So if you are using a preset that you've created, like my Bruce 01 set here, that was created before the Quick Access Panel was into this build of Darktable. So I can now go back to the window, click on show quick access panel, and I can then create my own quick access panel for my preset with whatever modules I'd like to be in there. Pretty cool. Also, you will notice that there is the option to auto apply this preset and by this preset, it's referring to a group of modules as displayed through these module headers on the right hand side of the darkroom, according to the type of image that you're editing. Now, I'm not quite sure why you would necessarily change the modules based on the type of image. I guess one of the developers had a need for this function and that's why it's ended up in there. Uh, but be aware that you can use any of these criteria to automatically change the group of modules that is displayed over here on the right hand side of the darkroom view. Seems a little arcane, but I'm guessing someone will have a use for it. So enjoy. More module goodness. If you want to create a second instance of a module and you want to use a preset that you have stored, either one you've created or one that's default in Darktable, doesn't matter, rather than going to this button and going new instance and then going to the new instance of the module and selecting the hamburger and selecting the preset, you can now, let's just assume that color zones was turned on, so I've now turned it on. You can go to the presets menu and you will notice right click to apply on a new instance. So in other words, right click on the hamburger and then select a preset and that will theoretically duplicate the module 
and apply that preset on the new instance of the module. Now, when I was testing before I started recording, it did work, but I've just tried it about five times and it's not working for me. So I'll assume that there's some kind of bug that hopefully will be ironed out before 3.6 comes out. As I mentioned in the last episode, I am still running on a development build of 3.5, but we're only a week away from release, so it should only be bug fixing in these last seven days. So hopefully that's something that has been picked up. I will endeavor to put something on GitHub to bring this to somebody's attention after I finish recording. Alrighty, so in theory, that will do the job. You can right click on the hamburger, select a preset, and that will create a new instance as well as use that preset in that new instance of the module. Next up, you can now access the blending controls for your modules with keyboard shortcuts. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see this when I was recording episode 95. I would have preferred to have included this in app 95 because it does relate to the preferences. So under the shortcuts and under processing modules, you will now see this option at the top for blending. So you can create keyboard shortcuts for anything you find under that blending menu. Another thing I would have preferred to have put in episode 95 is that scene referred workflow is now the default option under preferences and processing. Auto apply pixel workflow defaults scene referred. If memory serves me correctly, that was the case with 3.4, wasn't it? Maybe I'm just imagining things. But anyway, pretty much everything you need to do in Darktable these days can be done with a module which under the hood is using scene referred algorithms. So that is now the workflow default. Aurelian has, I was gonna say again, but is basically continuing to tinker with the algorithm for Filmic RGB. And you will notice under the options that there is now a version five for 2021 under the color science option. He's introduced a new algorithm for the way the splines work on the S curve. I don't completely understand the, the wording that he has used, but if I have interpreted it correctly, it means that you can apply more contrast without inadvertently introducing clipping. There are some caveats to it, and I will cover it in more depth in a dedicated video, probably after I've sent Aurelian an email for clarification on a couple of points. Next up, the Color Balance RGB module. This is a complete reworking of the old Color Balance module, which if memory serves me correctly, worked in the lab color space. Uh, this one works in, I, I don't even know what you call this one that has JZ, CZ, HZ, uh, but it is, if I understand it correctly, scene referred in its algorithm. Uh, so complete redesign. I'm not going to go into details right now. I'll do a bit of research and I will do a dedicated video on this. But if you're someone who used the color balance module in the past, you'll probably be quite comfortable to dive in and have a play with this and get some great results from it. For those of you who use a color checker, as in the physical device, uh, you are going to love the fact that the color calibration module now has a new option here at the bottom, calibrate with a color checker, and you can turn that on and get all these funky colored dots all over your image. And you can obviously choose from different uh, hardware color checkers. And to be honest, I haven't even looked into this. I myself don't own a hardware color checking device. Uh, so I might have to rely on somebody else's input to describe exactly how you would use this. Uh, but just know that it is there. So if you do have one of those hardware color checkers, I'm sure you can dive in and explore that and have some fun with it. Next up, another new module, the Sensorize module. Basically what this allows us to do is blur faces or anything else that you might want to obscure within an image. 
let's say you've shot something and there is some branding placement within the image and the client says, yeah, we can't have that Coke logo in the shot or whatever it is. So the way this works is it will allow you to introduce both a Gaussian blur and some Gaussian noise and any mixture thereof in order to obscure some of the pixels in your image. So we will start off with a blur radius. We can introduce some pixelation. Uh, we can introduce some output blur radius. And of course, you would then use a drawn mask to go, I just need to blur Kate's face. And I want to soften the edges on that, like so. And you can see where this is going, right? Now, what it does say in the blog post accompanying the release of 3.6 is this is not immune to reconstruction with AI and machine learning. So if you really need to make sure that the details are blurred beyond all hope of being reconstructed, this is probably not the module to use. You really want to use something that actually paints pixels over the part of the image that you are trying to obscure. But for basic censoring of an image, this is a, a handy addition to the tool set. Uh, and you can choose, you know, how, how big you want the pixel squares to be, how many squares, all that sort of stuff. And like I said, you can use masking to limit it to just one part of the image if that's what you need. Very cool. The masks that are applied to images in Darktable, particularly the drawn masks, things like circles, they are applied on the raw data and they generally happen before any distortion type modules appear in the pipeline. So I'm thinking of things like the lens correction module or the perspective correction module. In Darktable 3.6, you will now get visual representation of what those masks will look like on the raw data after those distorting type modules exist. To give you a demonstration of that, let's suppose I was to introduce something totally wacky, like some vertical perspective correction onto this image. And then I decide I want to create color balance RGB and I want to mask this to just Kate's face and I want to use a circular mask. So I would go drawn, come down here, activate the circle, and you will see that as I move across the image, that circle is actually distorted into an ellipse. So you're getting a real indication before you've even tried to apply that mask as to just how that mask will be distorted because of the perspective correction module doing its thing later in the pixel pipe. The gradient mask tool in, I think it was around about 3.0 or maybe 3.2, was given the option to bend. Uh, so if we were, once again, let's just say we went with a color zones module and we decide to add a gradient mask, you could click on this, activate the, the, the mask, then mouse over the middle line and use your mouse wheel to create a curved gradient mask. Now I'll just get rid of that. The change in Darktable 3.6 is that you can now activate that curve before you've actually committed the mask to the image. So whilst you're hovering around, you can right click, create the, the curve that you want, and then click, and then you can you know, choose to reposition or you know, alter the curve as you need. But the point is that under Darktable 3.6, you can now at least get that curve on the way to being in the right shape and 
you know, curvature before you've actually committed it to the image. Next up, the crop and rotate module, which we have all known and loved for all of the time that we've been using Darktable, is apparently causing a bit of a headache for the developers. And it looks like somewhere down the track in the not too distant future, it will be retired. As of Darktable 3.6, there is a new module called Crop. And it is recommended that if you want to do cropping of an image, that you use this new crop module, not the old crop and rotate module. So if you want to do things like keystone correction or angular rotation, because you want to fix a wonky horizon or something, then by all means use the old crop and rotate module. But the recommendation is that for cropping, use the new crop module. You will notice it also has dedicated margin cropping, which is fantastic. So you will be able to dial in exact percentages for left, right, top and bottom crop. I love that. I don't know about you, but demosaicing is not something I've ever really lost much sleep over. However, with Darktable 3.6, we have a new demosaicing algorithm called ratio corrected demosaicing. It's supposedly better. Uh, it only works on Bayer sensors. So that would include things like my Sony a7 III and most of the Canons and Nikons. Uh, I think things like your Fuji X-Trans sensor may not be compatible with this, but uh, if you have a camera with a Bayer array, then you can use the RCD demosaicing if you wish. Uh, if we take this image of this Patterson's Curse, which is a noxious weed, we'll just zoom in here to 400%. The default demosaic is PPG. We can go over to RCD. Yeah, it's marginally smoother, I guess. Uh, I can add some more color smoothing. To be honest, I don't see a massive difference. And I don't think once I'm zoomed out to 100%, I would ever be able to tell the difference. But if it's important to you, at least know that it's there. Another new feature in the masking is detail masks refinement. If I was to activate, well, we've got Filmic RGB active here, so let's just turn that on for a parametric mask. And you will notice that there is this new slider under mask refinement called details threshold. And basically what this does is limit the mask to either areas of the image which have no sharp edges, that would be dragging it to the left, or to areas of the image which have sharp edges, which would be dragging the slider to the right. So if we turn the mask visibility on and we bring this to the left, we can see that it is excluding the sharp areas of the image from the mask. So the mask is made up of only those pixels where everything is soft. If we go the other way to the right, we can see that the mask is being restricted to only those pixels which are in sharp focus and where there is hard edges and good detail. That's a really cool new trick. The old Chromatic Aberrations module has now been renamed Raw Chromatic Aberrations. It only works with Bayer sensors. I'm not sure if that was the case before or not. And it also adds this new Avoid Color Shift option. There is also a new module, which a little bit confusingly, is called Chromatic Aberrations, which is what the old module was called. The beauty of the new Chromatic Aberrations module is it works in linear RGB and it will work with all sensor types and apparently is a whole lot better than the old module. Little outside my wheelhouse, to be honest. And 
I did go searching for an image that had some chromatic aberrations in it and I couldn't find anything at short notice. Uh, if I can find something where I can demonstrate this, I will do a dedicated video on it somewhere down the track. The lens correction module has its own chromatic aberrations tool built in and that has now been updated and it now allows you to manually override the chromatic aberrations within the lens correction module. Also, there was apparently a bug which could create chromatic aberrations at the edges of the image and that bug has now been fixed. Another new addition is the addition of a vector scope. Up here on the histogram, that first icon on the left, set mode to waveform, will now also set mode to vector scope and will then take you on a third click back to your histogram view. So if you're someone who likes the vector scope view, knock yourself out. Next up, some of the modules, uh, particularly Filmic RGB and the Contrast Equalizer, have these graphic well, charts, maps, call them what you like. Uh, and by default, they have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but these particular modules can be resized. Simply use your control wheel and your mouse wheel, and that will allow you to resize the aspect ratio of those drawn elements within those modules which have a drawn element. A handful of modules have now been deprecated. Uh, that includes the old spot removal module that is now well and truly replaced with the retouch module. The old Vibrance module is now gone. You should be using the Color Balance RGB module in its place. The Basic Adjustments panel, we've already spoken about that. That's replaced by the Quick Access panel. And the Defringe module, that is replaced by the new Chromatic Aberrations module. And finally, there are supposedly some performance increases written into the code all throughout Darktable 3.6. Obviously, it will depend on your hardware and the modules that you choose to use in your workings. Alrighty, guys, that was intense. It has taken me ages to record the content for this episode. I'm going to have to leave the editing for another night. Uh, but that is all of the changes that have been introduced in the darkroom view of Darktable 3.6. Gotta say, I love this software more and more every day. Uh, it is just a magnificent beast. Alrighty, questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below. And uh, yeah, fun times ahead. I will see you in the next one.